Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, and a special welcome if you're visiting here at Living Waters today. Oh, we're glad you could be with us on this day that God has made. Today we welcome uh, Bishop D. Peterson and Pastor Steve Cook, uh, Synod Minister from our Southwestern Minnesota Synod. Uh, they're here to, I think they're here to install me as your pastor. <laughs> the, uh, so in any case, uh, I'm honored and privileged to be uh, installed today as pastor at Living Waters today. Thank you for wearing your name tags. Uh, again, I wish the whole city would wear name tags for a little while till I get to know people. Um, but uh, very, very much appreciate those. <clears throat> Somebody mentioned to me, you're lucky you get to be here today when we have roles, sir. <laughs> so indeed, we are uh, happy about that. And so we're going to smell roles, those coming and we're invited to partake uh, after the service of the rolls. Just some announcements. Uh, the new food shelf hours are going to be Tuesday from 10 to 12. Uh, and let's see here. If you have the gift of baking, that's great. Bring, bring, brings great joy to people, like with rolls. Perhaps you have the gift of horticulture. Uh, if so, we're looking for some green thumbs. Uh, people would like to work uh, with the, the greenery around the, the church grounds. Um, talk to uh, Bonnie if, if you have some information or would, would like to be able to help with that uh, cause. Maybe you'd like to help with the, uh, the food fest also for parking on the 25th. Uh, there's a clipboard that's in the um, North X gathering area somewhere, and please do volunteer for that if you can. VBS uh, is almost here, 
Vacation Bible School, the, t the 18th through the 21st of July, uh, 9 to 3. And it's, co it's coming up soon this summer um, with Luth uh, Living Waters and Salem uh, teaming up on that. There was a link on a flyer that was sent out. Uh, please spread the news uh, for the kids to uh, sign up for VBS as it's coming up. We thank our technology team today um, the, and our musicians for leading worship in the choir, as well as our, our, our uh, singers with uh, leading the, the hymns are Chris and Tim and Brenda. And uh, we've got Jeff, Jen, and Kristen, Wayne, and Janet uh, with, with the singers and Chris and Tim and Brenda helping them in the, in the sound and AV booth. Are there any other announcements this morning? Anybody else? I missed one. If not, let us sing together the hymn, uh, Gather Us In. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join in the Pentecost prayer. Holy One, ignite within, within us a fiery, fiery passion, passion for your, your mission in the world today. Warm us by the Spirit's dancing tongues of flame, that we may feel your kindling blaze within urging us to do your greater good. Make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us to share your love in the world. In Jesus' name and through his spirit we pray. Amen.
confess our sins before God. Loving God, we know, we know that, that in every, every generation, generation you call for prophets, prophets to proclaim, proclaim your word. We give, we give you thanks that you are still speaking every even day. today. Your, your spirit inspires the young to see visions of a new creation, creation and, and elders, elders to dream of a time not, not yet known. Yet we confess that, that we fail to hear, to hear your voice when it comes from an unexpected place. Convinced that we are right, we miss the good news of your reconciling love. Forgive us, God, restore us with humility, and awaken us anew to your pure presence and your promise. Amen. The God of creation is a God of mercy. God. God is quick to forgive, and God's promise of restoration is for all people. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Remember that in baptism we are made sons and daughters of God, marked with the cross of Christ forever, and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Please be seated as we hear from God's word. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. What are fans for? Yes. Keep you cool. I could use some of that. <laughs> the, uh, especially on a day like this one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, keep you cool. Any other things that you use a fan for that you can think of? Dry things out. Sure, if they, we might need that. Um, Rain's a lot. How about, how about this one? What is God, can you see God every day? Can you see what God looks like? All right. Um, what, is, what does a fan do when you, when you turn it on? Yeah. It starts, and then what happens? It gets cold because the air moves, right? Can you see the air moving? Not real, necessarily, but does that mean that the, that the, the air isn't moving, and that, that, it's not, that the wind isn't there? No, the wind is there. Let's try it out. Today, by the way, is Pentecost. That's <laughs> where it's all, all going. Notice that the, the, uh, these are red. You see a lot of red today. People who like to wear red on Pentecost sometimes because it reminds us of a special day in the beginning of the church where the Holy Spirit came and, uh, and there were little tongues of fire on people's heads and the wind blew, the Spirit blew like a mighty wind amongst the people. Could they see it? Maybe couldn't see it, but they could see all these awesome things happening. Let's try this. Just like this, there's not much action, but you turn it on and what happens? Now you can see What's going on? Can you see what's making these little banners or flames go? What's, what's making it happen? The wind. The wind. The air that's being moved through the fan. Can you see the wind? Can't see the wind, but you know the wind is there because these are moving, right? It's kind of like God is like that. The Holy Spirit is like that. Uh, we may not be able to see God, you know, clearly with our eyes all the time, but that we can see God and the Holy Spirit. We can see what the God is doing through the Holy Spirit out in the world. Um, filling people, people's hearts and uh, moving us as the church out in, in, uh, with people to help them and so on. So 
Remember that. We may not be able to see God, but we can see what God is doing around us because of the Holy Spirit that's working in us. Let's pray. Be after me. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. By the power that you give us, send us out into this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up. my privilege to um, work with your leadership and your call committee during this transition. I wonder if there are any call committee members present here today. If you are, would you please stand up? Oh, there has to be call committee members. <clears throat> also bring greetings from the 229 congregations of the Southwestern Minnesota Synod, and particularly our newest congregation, Reborn Lao Lutheran Church over in Wake Park, a congregation that is serving uh, new Americans from Laos and their families and friends, many of which who are not Laotian. We're pretty sure that in this first year as a congregation, there are more adult baptisms at Reborn than in the whole Synod in, the dec in that decade. Bring greetings from the 10,000 congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and from our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. And of course, we're part of a worldwide fellowship of 99 national Lutheran church bodies in the Lutheran World Federation. Here's a fun fact. At any given week, before COVID or during, at any given week, there are more Lutherans in Lutheran worship in Ethiopia than in all of North America and Europe combined. Which raises an interesting question, doesn't it? What is a Lutheran? What is traditional Lutheran music or food or festivals? We are part of a worldwide community that is gathered together by one thing only, our, that we believe, teach, and confess that the whole world is saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, period. Please join with me in reading the reading from the second chapter of Acts. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Now there were devout Jews from it. <laughs> every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, 
this is what has, was spoken to the prophet Joel. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, and the sun, shall be, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the day's Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We stand together to greet the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, Glory to you O Lord. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, the wind has been blowing, and I am so grateful to God for the way the Spirit has been working in your lives and in the lives of Pastor Jake and Stephanie. It's a day to celebrate. In that reading from Acts, we heard that there was a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where the disciples were sitting, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Wind and fire, they can speak of comfort and peace. A wind blows a gentle breeze that covers the fresh scent of lilacs coming into our homes at this time of year, right? I love that. Fire can evoke images of family and friends gathering around a fireplace in the wintertime or around a campfire in the summer. Wonderful images. But wind and fire can also bring fear and chaos and destruction when they are out of control. The straight line winds and tornadoes that have swept through our synod recently give evidence of that. Ripping trees up by the roots, tearing roofs off of buildings and scattering the shards in the fields. A couple of weeks ago when I drove from Benson down to <clears throat> Redwood Falls and around the area of Cottonwood, you can't believe the destruction. Parts of buildings just scattered everywhere bringing loss of livelihood and also death. Fires can be a source of chaos and destruction. 
the fires that continue to destroy forests and communities in New Mexico and Colorado, and now as we hear around the globe in Greece. <clears throat> Those fires occurring with greater frequency and vengeance. Put fire and wind together and you have something that has the power you cannot control. But together, wind and fire have power not only to destroy, but to purify and to transform. And that's exactly what was happening in that story of Pentecost. Jesus had spoken to his followers about what was to come. He'd said, I have come to light a fire on the earth, and oh, how I wish the flames were already leaping. There's a baptism ahead of me, and I feel distressed until it is accomplished. Well, as the disciples tried to imagine what was ahead for him and for them, they were troubled and afraid. So Jesus gave them his command to love one another, and he gave them his blessing and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then he walked to the cross and out of the empty tomb. And yet even then the disciples were so afraid, so afraid. So he again gave them that blessing. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Love and forgive one another. And he gave them his promise. You will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Still, they went away, hiding behind locked doors, consumed by their fears. And I wonder if you've ever felt that way. Different scenario, but I think back to two years ago. That's exactly what most of us were doing. Hiding in our homes, terrified of being around another human being, masked to keep out all the bad stuff out there, guarded of where we went, who we got close to, in fear. Different situation. But even now, I remember that feeling in my heart. And I have a little bit of that physical response when I'm in a crowd still. <laughs> yeah, we've been there. Until finally, we were able to emerge and be together again like this. In the early church, it was the wind and fires of the Holy Spirit that came upon them that Pentecost. And they spoke in languages they'd never learned to an international crowd who understood every word. And they were filled with a fire of a God-given mission that they felt compelled to proclaim. That prayer of the day that you just prayed put it so beautifully. And they moved out into their community and their world with courage and conviction that they never imagined possible. The wind and fire of the Spirit burned away their fear and their timidity and the ancient divisions that were so powerful among them. And in their place grew vigor and courage. And the church grew. And the church grew. And that's why you and I are here today. You see, when wind and fire come together, things are transformed. And in that transforming, first something dies, something is consumed, and then something new begins to grow. In the earliest church, the elements that were burned away were troubled hearts, fear, hiding, timidity, divisions, because of hatred and language and ethnicity and nation. The disciples were commissioned to continue the bold and grace-filled work that Jesus had done. The Father sent the Son. The Father and the Son sent the Spirit. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sent the church. Disciples, learners, became apostles, sent out ones on a mission with a commission. Go and make disciples. Love God. Love others as Jesus loved. 
Jesus said, I placed you here to light a fire on the earth, and oh, how I wish the flames were already leaping. And so he made sure that you and I would receive our own Pentecost, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in baptism. And in that, our sinful self was burned away so that a new creation might arise and we might live as disciples and apostles sent and on fire with that Holy Spirit. And that's why Living Waters exists as a congregation, to be sent out into your families, neighborhoods, schools, workplaces, community, so filled with a spirit that fear and timidity are burned away, resentments forgiven, suspicion destroyed, divisions bridged, people of this church bearing witness to the love of God in Jesus pointing to the reconciling work that God is doing in the world, bringing new life as you live out being the hands and feet and love of Jesus where you are. Over the past year, you've discovered in more and more ways that a pastor does not do this work for you. This is Christ's church, and this is the church's ministry. You have called Pastor Jake not to do this work for you, not to be your hired hand, but to serve as your pastor and lead you in these ministries. And this ministry is beautifully summed up in words that we're going to hear in just a bit as you say that you welcome his, him as a steward of the mysteries of God, a steward of the mysteries of God. Well, what does that churchy thing mean? It means this. It means that he is accepting this call to the ministry of word and sacrament, where we experience the mystery of how Jesus is present in the preached word, in the living waters of baptism, in the Lord's Supper, and in that presence that Jesus promised gives you new life. It means that he will tend the mystery of Christian community. I believe and I discover more and more every day that Christian community really is a mystery because it can only be a mystery that God could bring together people as different as all of us are, one from another, with our different experiences and ideas, and make us into one, make us into one community of love in Jesus Christ. And so Pastor Jake is joining you in this ministry, which is, as St. Paul said, to equip you for the work of ministry for building up the body of Christ. Friends, you and I, Living Waters, and the other 229 congregations of this synod and our partners near and far are part of a worldwide Pentecost movement that began 2,000 years ago and that God continues to send like the wind and like fire. That spirit, as Pastor Steve said, blew so that a new mission congregation would begin just not far from here and people would hear the gospel in their own language. After the installation, I'll be heading down there because they're having a spirit-filled celebration today too. And we give thanks for how the Holy Spirit continues to blow across our synod and around the world and how the Holy Spirit continues to empower this Jesus movement to go out into the world through the fire that burns not only in you, but through you. You have been baptized, so that fire has been upon you. You've known forgiveness at this Lord's Supper, and so that fire goes with you. You've received the love of Jesus through somebody else, so you have that fire to bring that love to others. And God knows that our world needs that right now. You see, this is a love that you cannot keep to yourself. 
like the wind coming out of a fan, it has to move. Like a fire, it has to burn out there. Pastor Jake, I am so excited for you as you begin your ministry among this faith-filled congregation of living waters. Friends in Christ, what a joy that today you welcome Pastor Jake and Stephanie and together in faith live out the good news of grace and love in Jesus Christ. Today we say, come Holy Spirit, fill your servant, Pastor Jake. Amen, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your love. And let God's people say, amen. Join together with the whole Church of Christ on earth to confess the Church's faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I now invite his presenter to bring Pastor Jake forward. Pastor Jake. After prayerful deliberation, we of Living Waters Lutheran Church have called Pastor Jake Deerhog to serve as Minister of Word and Sacrament in the position of pastor. I present Pastor Jake Deerhog and this letter to certify the call. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And a reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech and in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pastor Jake, in the presence of this assembly, Will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God to the call of the church? I will and ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace. Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people, nourish them with word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will, will you give faithful witness to the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. And let the church say, Amen. I invite the assembly to stand and join in the, because now we have words addressed to you. Jake, could you turn around and face the yeah, assembly? Okay. Good. People of God, will you receive Pastor Jake Deerhog as a messenger of Jesus Christ, 
sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation, will you regard him as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Pastor Jake, the office of, pa of pastor of this congregation is now committed to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. I invite all the clergy who are here today uh, to come as Pastor Jake Neal's uh, to join the blessing, and I ask the assembly if you care to put a hand of blessing up in the general direction. Okay. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You suddenly may be seated. Now we remind ourselves and Pastor Jacob the essence of the pastoral office. You have been called to be among us. You have been called to be among us to proclaim the good news. Pastor Jake. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I present Pastor Jake Deerhog, your pastor. Let us welcome him in the name of Christ. We stand together for the prayers of the people. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray for the God of resurrection, for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, send your spirit on your whole church. Where it is divided, heal it. Where it is an error, correct it. Strengthen and bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Dee, all pastors, especially Jake and all deacons, all who serve your church in any way. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy and for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially in Ukraine. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. gather your people across regions, nations, and lands, root out our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ, and by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your peoples across re regions and nations and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. Peace be with you. I invite you to be seated as we receive this morning's offering. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, you are the bread of life, bread broken to mend all broken dreams, broken people, broken homes, and broken hearts. Break the good news lovingly to all struggling spirits that you are nourishment to anyone who hungers for life. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I ask our servers to come forward to assist us. Uh, we welcome everyone to the Lord's table, knowing that with the bread and the wine, we receive the body and blood of Jesus for the strengthening of our faith and for the forgiveness of our sins. Well, there's grape juice available um, for those who request it. Also, we have gluten-free wafers, um, corn-free wafers and gluten-free for those who request I receive the, the cup um, as you come forward, as the ushers assist us forward, and then we uh, gather in the front and uh, receive the bread. Um, and if you need gluten-free, it's right there. You just take it from the plate. Um, and then also as you pass by, those with the pouring chalices, they will pour either wine or grape juice as you request in your cup. Then we return back to where we are seated. The table is ready. Come and eat.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We sing the benediction song. I'm going to sing. I'm just let my stand. <laughs> going to sing our sending song. I uh, just want to say briefly, it's good to be here with you. All right. Very good. Stephanie, are just uh, so blessed, so thankful to be here amongst you and uh, celebrating our friendship in Christ and community in Christ. And after the song is done and the final blessing, there's the rolls. So <laughs> stick around. Sounds great. Let us sing. <laughs> we sing Spirit of Gentleness.
Peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. All right, excuse me. <clears throat> Test one. <laughs> 